Okay, so we're getting our first look at a new set of contrast colors and shades, and of course the um, Skull White spray. Is it Skull White or Corax White? I can't remember what the white scar. Anywho, new shade washes: Mortarian Grime, Blood, uh, Berserker Blood Shade, Croak Green, Poxwalker, Soul Blight Gray, and Torgar Rage Shade, Rage Shade, and Tyron Blue. Now, these shade washes, they describe them as being, um, you know, better to be sit, uh, suited for obviously laying on top of a contrast so that you can deepen color or even create uh, filters on top and even change the values. For example, like if you went with yellow uh, contrast and then came in with, you know, uh, croak green, just to add a little bit of green into the shadows and such, I imagine this is the kind of thing you can do with these colors. Now, I'm not sure if these paints are being added to the contrast line, if these are replacing any colors, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's very interesting that we get three yellows, Iron Jaws, Bad Moon Yellow, and Imperial Fist. And yeah, they are of similar hue Whereas Imperial Fist looks like it has a bit more um, orange in it, whereas Bad Moon Yellow seems to be just pure brightness. Iron Jaws Yellow uh, looks like it might have a bit more brown to it. And so, you know, is this different from Iandan Yellow currently, or even, uh, what is the other yellow? I can't remember the name of the other yellow now. For the, for the life of me, I can't remember. But either way, um, a lot of these colors, they look deeper. They look a little bit um, more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you can see how they puddle up and they get darker and then stay bright along the edges. Some of them also feel a bit more like, uh, for example, Tesseract Glow, where that one almost has a fluorescent quality. And I think that's where they went with this formulation in these uh, first few that they showcase here, this yellow-green, this teal color, as well as this uh, turquoise color, this uh, Croxagore scales and such the yellow is really really impressive uh from the painted models though they look more flat they don't have a lot of contrast in them so i think that's really where a lot of their brightness comes from is the fact that they don't go very deep uh, into the recesses, you can see it's actually fairly uniform, especially on that purple model. There's not a lot of highs and lows. It's actually fairly uniform, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I think that's how they're maintaining a lot of the brightness. And of course, they're also uh, advertising a new uh, spray paint, a new primer uh, for the, uh, what is it, the White Scar? Or? Yeah, it's called White Scar. And anybody who's played with uh, Gray Seer or... Um, Wraithbone, no, whenever you use it, it smells like the White Scar paint. It doesn't smell like black. Black has a different smell to it, whereas uh, White Scar does have a very familiar smell. And in fact, I suspect it's a recipe they've used for many, many years. And in fact, Citadel White is actually really, really good. But I think with this reformulation, I think it has a bit more pigment to it, similar to Gray Seer and Wraithbone, where you're intended to spray it on in one kind of um, you know, even coverage on a model, whereas, you know, typically I do not recommend overspraying a model because then you overprime the model. And, you know, whereas these kind of colors, um, you know, they kind of need that. They need to have that flat, even coverage on it. And I suspect with White Scar, anybody who's kind of overprimed with White Scar before knows that you, you get this chalky texture on the surface, kind of like it almost feels like paper almost. It has that kind of, and when you reuse these uh, thinned out paints on that surface uh, right from the start, it just bleeds right into the uh, primer. And so I think the, the primer has been reformulated like Gray Seer and Wraithbone because those primers uh, were adapted for these uh, very thin paints and they actually have a bit more body to them as opposed to White Scar, which has always had this kind of, you know, like very thin texture, um, just from my own personal experience. Rich and Regal, of course, we're getting into oranges, reds, and these very light colors here. And again, like the reds, I'm not seeing a lot of contrast. Like what we typically see, like Griffhound Orange, you can get very, very bright orange hues, but you also get very, very dark values. Whereas these feel a lot more like an opaque color sitting on that surface. I'm not seeing a lot of the contrast as opposed to like the blue and green. You can see the highs and lows on it, but the orange, yellow and reds, I'm not seeing it. And I think that's very, very interesting. And I'm wondering how that's gonna play out in the future. Uh, the ethereal greens, uh, ethereal and eerie, excuse me. 
Um, you can see the greens. Yeah, they are, they do what we typically expect from contrast. Even the other colors, even that light blue. That light blue looks fantastic, by the way. Uh, you can see how like you you still get those highs and lows in there uh, with the blues. Again, very very heavy pigment. And here we get to look at that yellow. What is that? That's that uh, iron gr iron jaws yellow. Yeah, and you can see how it, it doesn't have that same level of contrast. In fact, these feel a bit more like they are thinner iterations or I guess there's less medium in them or whatever it is where they get that really deep color and then also maintain the brighter edges that we normally get with contrast paints. And I think that's kind of interesting. Now, again, I don't know if these are replacing colors or if the system is intended to work alongside these new shade washes and apparently the new sh these new shade washes are replacing the older ones agrax null oil stuff like that and well maybe not null, null oil i can't remember which ones it was now but it's in the article um you can see how very very thin the color is and in fact you would have to lay a lot down on the surfaces to get those really deep transitions like you normally would like this looks like basically the shade washes with a more medium added to it so it doesn't tint your overall surface too heavily and basically it saves you from having to uh thin your shade washes down for slight effects now for everybody out there uh not sure exactly what i'm talking about as you develop as a painter, you will uh, thin your colors down more so that you can build up tighter grade, uh, gradients of transition on a surface. And these feel like that's what they're intended for. They're intended, so for example, like that blue, you could slap that on, you know, well, probably like one of these lighter blues to intensify shadow, right? You could use like that, what is that? Pilar Glacier or whatever the heck it's called and then use this blue shade wash to deepen up the color in places that you wanted to. You could be very deliberate or you can apply it over the entirety of the model and still have your um, really highs and lows. And in fact, could you start off with this first and then put a contrast on top of it and get the similar effect or does it require you to use the contrast and then use the shade wash? As the coming coming days go, you know, we're going to find all this out, of course. And with White Scar getting a reformulation, and they give us a little picture of what it looks like before versus what it looks like now. Obviously, it is a very, very bright. And of course, I mean, it might also be the photography, um, you know, giving us this impression that it's just so bold and bright. But I suspect it probably is very, very bright. And of course, uh, when you're using uh, spray paint primers like Gray Sear or Wraithbone, yeah, the, you tend to spray pretty heavily on a model versus previous uh, white scar usage. I really did not use it that heavily. Um, even if I had like little blank spots in the re recesses and stuff like that, uh, basically it was the binder in the paint that provided that surface for the paint to get a hold of. And then of course you build up versus this system where you want to lay that white primer down pr fairly heavily and then use contrast and the contrast paints themselves, they do not appear to be as, um, as contrasty as the previous iterations. And I'm, again, I'm wondering, is this replacing the contrast or are we using this alongside other contrast? Again, um, some of these colors, I'm not seeing a lot of, uh, value difference in the, um, in the application on the colors. And then, and again, with the reformulation of the shade washes being a lot thinner bodied, they feel like they are going backwards uh, as far as this process is concerned. And of course, you know, um, I mean, it's brand new. We're gonna see, I mean, plenty of painters are gonna be playing with this soon enough and we'll get all our answers then. Of course, they also um, are gonna give us further demonstrations. I assume the way the article ends is that it's gonna get, uh, we're gonna get more previews of these colors, uh, probably more tutorial-like things explaining how to use these colors. And it, oh yeah, it was at the bottom here. Nuln Oil, Agrax Earth Shade, Reclan Flesh Shade, and Cryptic Armor Shade are leaving the range. So those are going away. And I like Cryptic Armor Shade. That's actually a really good color. Uh, it's really great on top of metallics to give you that bronze. Well, like like the Necrons. Um, so yeah, like a color like that Mortarian, Mortar or yeah, Mortarian Grime, that looks more like the thinned out iteration of Skeleton Horde. And so again, like I'm kind of curious as to where this is going. Like, is this replacing, 
or is this an in addition? Because some of these colors, uh, they feel like they just simply sit on that surface, like those reds, like that orange. I don't see any highs and lows in that. It looks like one uniform application on that surface and and same with the purple there so i don't know let me know what you guys think down below uh do you think this is replacing is this an uh in addition are you guys looking forward to the playing with these new colors do you guys already i imagine some of you painters are looking at these colors going yeah we can do this we can do this now with this as opposed to what we could do with contrast i was a big fan of contrast i am a big fan of contrast and you know all the things it can do for us in conjunction with using regular opaque colors and using them to as filters when thinned out on top of other colors eldari emerald well i gotta get that one right for sure <laughs> anywho uh that, those are just my first initial thoughts uh according to this article and yeah so we're gonna see more and then of course once we start to get the, the paints in our hands and start you know playing with them and of course a lot of the experienced pla uh, painters out there start playing with them uh, I think we'll get a better, uh, you know, verdict on what we're dealing with here.